In a world where everyone masters magic, a young boy named Will had the dream of becoming a great sorcerer, but unfortunately Will did not have magic and amidst the teasing and cold looks of his classmates and instructors Will felt useless, but even so he continued to fight to make his dream come true even though he had to wield a sword as the only warrior in a world of wizards who aimed to achieve the whole of the magical world. In order to fulfill the promise he made to a special girl and before continuing he is already leaving his registration to help with our goal of 2000 subscribers and he does not forget to like and comment a lot that this helps me a lot to continue with the daily videos but let's go to the video. Rigardin's Magic Academy was the place where magical talent was valued above all. But a boy with no aptitude was looking for a way to advance in the academy, and for that he visited the dungeon every day, and even without being able to use magic he eliminated the monsters with his solitary sword. And one day during a class Professor Edward called Will insistently since he was distracted, but after getting his attention he asked the boy to create a flame with his catalyst and questions his delay. After all it was an easy exercise, and even with a lot of insistence Will can't make everyone laugh, while the teacher said it was unfortunate to think that they had a student who was unable to use even magic anymore, but this was expected from a theoretical student who was only good for taking notes. And had no salvation and a boy summons his flames creating the demonstration expected by Edward, who asks Mr. Shown to restrain himself not to do anything without permission, and he replies mockingly, that he only wanted to help him since Will did not seem to be in his best shape, and so the teacher concludes his explanation, after all in this world magic would be absolute supremacy beyond authority, and the strength of magic would be pure power, after all the heroes of all were magicians, and in this academy the only thing that mattered would be their talent for magic, and a talentless one who has theoretical knowledge, but cannot perform even a bit of magic should not remain in these halls that gave rise to the wise and the foolish dreamers who do not know their limits should withdraw. And after class, Shaun and his classmates start teasing Will and Shaun asks if he wasn't ashamed to go to the dungeon to eliminate weak monsters in search of credits, but Colette tells him to stop it and says that Will was kinder than him, in addition to being the hardest, so he wouldn't allow him to insult his friend, making the boy laugh by saying that kindness and hard work are not would make no one a great wizard and besides Will's dream of becoming a magic vander was something unattainable. And when he leaves he says to listen to the teacher and give up the academy. But Will and Colette start walking and the girl tells him not to listen to the boy, and there was certainly something wrong with the teacher who made him a laughing stock, which Will didn't care about, after all he really couldn't use magic, but he considered himself lucky to have a beautiful girl like her worried about him, making the girl embarrassed and she says that these flatteries wouldn't take him anywhere and questions if he said that to everyone making the boy apologize and he explains. That since he was little they taught him to praise girls while his praise echoed in the girl's head who is embarrassed and she thinks that a daughter of a noble family, even if only in name could not lose her composure in this way and notices while watching the sky and he says that the day was beautiful what the girl agrees, and when looking at the sky she says that the most powerful wizards the magic vander continued to defend the heavens making will. Remember that a long time ago people knew. Nothing about the heavens and lived trapped in the darkness of a world terrorized by the celestial invaders, but five wizards changed the history of the world and together they repelled the invaders by casting a seal in the sky that brought peace to the world and became known as the Magic Vanders, which in the future became a title transmitted only to the strongest and something desired by everyone and Colette asks if he thought that the wand of the Ice Maiden Albiz Vina was also taken care of. Everyone which will confirms and says that for sure she would be sitting near a window looking at them and remembers her past with her friend Elferia where they talked about the sun and the moon and the girl said about the beauty of the red color that could be seen during the sunset in another place, and if one day, they get as close to the sky at the top of the tower becoming Magic Vander, maybe they will be able to see the sunset, and in this way they promised to do it together, but unfortunately. It was nothing more than an innocent childhood promise, but Elferia's potential was real, and with her talent, she became the youngest to win the title of Magic Vander, and left for the top of the tower, while Will who had no talent became mediocre, but was unable to give up the promise they made and to fulfill his dream of staying by Elferia's side he kept fighting. And later his teacher Workner scolded him for going to the dungeon without permission, and to make matters worse he went to the seventh floor alone. But anyway he would give him two credits for the creatures he defeated leaving the boy to fight, while the teacher asked if he still hasn't given up on becoming a magic vander, and will questions if this would be wrong and Workner says that before climbing the tower it was necessary to advance to the higher institute and for that he needed a lot of credits in writing, spells and praxis, and as he could not use magic, he would never earn sorcery credits and WAL replies that this would be the reason he was focused on praxis collecting credits in the dungeon. But the professor reminds him that he has said it several times, 
but advancing only with Praxis was effectively impossible especially for someone who does not know how to use magic, but still the boy he wanted to try. So the teacher scolds him again, because there was no point in thinking. About being a magic vander if his graduation was at risk, because he didn't get any credit in the recent exams, which meant that he needed to earn four credits by the weekend. Leaving the boy desperate for missing only two days and starts frantically looking in his notes for the monsters that gave four credits and the teacher says that he was just talking to himself, and there were some reports of a Baskerville that was worth four credits on the sixth floor, and apparently a certain theoretical student. Still hasn't defeated any leaving while so excited that he runs to hug the professor, while in the background, Shaun listened to the conversation of the two and decides to go after the monster, so that he could get rid of that one without talent. And that night Will and Kiki went to the dungeon and the boy was confident because he had fought a Baskerville before, although Kiki has bad memories, but ahead Shaun and his classmates were preparing to take care of the monster before the failed, so that he is expelled for lack of credits, although one of them questioned if this was really safe, making Will uncomfortable. But the other boy changes his focus, after all Shaun was from the elite, and when he walks again he thinks that in this world a guy who didn't know how to use magic shouldn't talk about Vander magic, and even his presence annoyed him. But he ends up being surprised when a monster throws his friend's body away with just one punch, making his other friend scream in fear, which catches the attention of Will, who runs worried that someone is being attacked and comes across an evil sentinel, a 10-credit monster that should live in the depths of the dungeon and in addition, the one who was terrified. Sirius Shaun who desperately attacks the monster and Will notices that his magic had no effect on the creature and for sure he wouldn't have the slightest chance so he should help him but Will hesitates and wonders if he really had the obligation to save him after having mocked him so many times humiliating him in front of everyone, so he should just run away, but Will hears Elferia's voice echoing in his chest and he remembers when she told him that she knew he was someone kind and the bravest of all and gave him those glasses that he carried with him despite believing that she was wrong since all he wanted was to be by her side to be worthy of her and he was nothing more than a normal and shameful guy. And when Shaun was about to be eliminated Will holds the creature's blow and says that because of that it would become a lone sword and Edward runs to Workner worried about Shaun and his group who went to the dungeon without permission, then asks the professor to use his familiar to find him leaving Workner worried. He asks which floor the boy had gone and Edward replies that he would be the sixth which leaves the professor calm and says that in that case it would not be necessary, after all Will was there and uses his magic in a crystal ball that shows the boy battling fiercely against the creature cutting him without hesitation and dodging its crushing blows and with his absurd speed, Will strikes the monster, making Shaun wonder what that was and if that would really be the same Will, leaving even Edward without believing what was seeing, and Workner tells him that Will was a true irregular, who possessed the superhuman strength that a wizard would never possess in addition to a physique as robust as a dwarf's and above all his intuition to understand the strategies of an enemy, after seeing them only once was unmatched and Will rips off the monster's arm, while the professor continued to say that it could be true that he could not use it magic. But nevertheless, in this world full of magic, he was the only warrior who, with a stroke of his sword, was able to overcome even lightning, and with the sword of the monster himself, will cuts his puff and eliminates him. And after the combat he goes to Shaun and asks if he had been hurt leaving the boy furious and Edward is outraged because he considers it impossible he could not tolerate that someone who cannot use magic had managed to overcome him and the next day, Will takes the remains of the teacher's monster, who gives him 10 credits leaving the boy excited, and so we start the story of the boy who would turn the world upside down down a story. About the union between wand and sword. Five years ago Will was tormented by the student's malicious comments about his inability to use magic, and that he was only accepted into the academy as a bait to attract his friend Elferia, who had become a Vander magician so he would certainly be expelled, but in the classroom from the director, together with Professor W. R. Kanyar. The director recognized his skill with a sword after the boy had cut off his magic. After all it would be very interesting to see a sword trying to become a wand and in. Tears Will asked if he could climb the tower if he became strong to meet Yelafai again, and the director replied that perhaps it would be possible, but only if he continued with his unshakable determination, and as soon as they left her office she wondered how it would all end. In his reinforcement class Workner explains that the meaning of climbing the tower would be to advance to the higher institute where those who reign on the top floors of the tower could become Vander's magic, and for this you must be recognized by the higher institute, and there were two methods of advancement which would be creating a new type of magic or obtaining 7200 credits at the academy, and this would be the method that most students used. And later Will meets Colette and says that Professor Workner was very kind in helping them with tutoring classes, which she agrees with, after all. 
Professor Edward would never give that type of class and they passed by the hallway where Shaun's friend said he was incredible for having defeated an evil sentry alone and would soon join the top three while the boy thought that everyone was wrong and in fact it was Will who defeated him and when he notices Will he goes to him and grabs him by the shirt and asks how it was possible since he had no talent but Colette scolds him and the boy leaves and she asks if something happened between the two which will confirms despite it not being a big deal. But in the meantime Professor Edward ordered Director Cauldron to expel Will, and she asks why. After all he was already in his final year, and he replies that this academy didn't need warriors or someone who thinks they can overcome magic without being able to use it. Theron Cauldron says that if he ignores the fact that he cannot use magic he would stand out so much that calling it excellence would be insufficient since his reports had interesting perspectives, and in addition to Vandermagic he could become an artificer or a healer since the duty of this academy was to produce educated scholars for the fateful day, but Edward responds that the boy didn't want to become a scholar but rather a Vandermagician which would be the biggest issue which the Director also thought was a problem, and so she let him test him however he wanted and as he already discovered his secret he should do it personally, and if Will fails to pass his test she would entrust the issue of promotion or expulsion to him which makes Edward excited while the director thought he could test him as much as possible. Determine the truth for himself. After all he, as the Dark Viper Wizard, was the one who understood the most about Vander's magic. And in the hallway, Colette helped Will open his locker and noticed his sword that he did not have permission to carry on campus, and the two went to the library where Will wrote about the Garzaranso War that the dwarves participated in and Colette praised his writing and gave advice. He doesn't try so hard but Will responds that if he lost even one credit he wouldn't be able to advance to the higher institute, and furthermore he could understand how the dwarves felt, and even in the face of the most powerful magic they didn't give up and that determination could overcome even magic, and for that reason he had to do his best, but Colette notices that he has white hair and insists that he let her take it off. But the two are interrupted by Professor Edward who orders Mr. Surfert to accompany him to the Salon of Spells. And when they arrive at the room, the teacher says that he should be grateful for receiving an extra class to check his worth and as a task he should land a single blow on him and refusing was out of the question, and if he succeeds he would receive 5 credits in spell work but if he failed, he would be expelled from the academy, leaving Will distressed while the teacher said that those who have no talent should not even be allowed to look at Vander's magic, and now he had reasons to fight and began his attack, leaving Will distressed. But meanwhile Workner met with a director who had called him and she invokes her magic and shows Edward battling while leaving Workner distressed and she informs him that the teacher was carrying out a test and he was forbidden to stop him and just like her recognized when he wanted to defend Will, she had to recognize Edward's concern, who was checking whether Will was worthy of trying to become a Vander magician. And Workner questions why it had to be Professor Edward and recognizes that. This was extremely cruel, after all, he would be the who was closest to becoming a Vander magician despite being defeated but he was still an ascendant who reached the top of the tower. And Edward continues attacking Will tirelessly. The boy even tries to kick him but his defense was impenetrable and the teacher says that he really had no salvation and repels Will and then hits him with his magic. Making the boy admit that he was very strong and could activate spells quickly without using enchantments and his familiar Kiki who was also injured runs from the room while Edward said that he would only use two magics which would be the black flames and his shield to repel his. Savagery in quotes Doctrine 27 which would be he who does not master a thousand spells must strive to master a single one that would become like a thousand arrows at his side, leaving Will impressed by him, overlapping the magic to hit him with a barrage of them and starts running to dodge the spells but this ends up being ineffective as the professor hits him without any mercy, making Will think that he would never defeat him but perhaps he would have a chance if he had his sword. And meanwhile Colette was worried about the type of class the teacher was giving Will, but she notices Kiki extremely hurt and is worried about the boy's family member who seemed to be wanting something from his locker so the girl opens it. While Edward said that he didn't need to talk but Vander's magic were the pinnacle of all magicians and if he couldn't overcome someone like him he would never have a chance to reach the top and started to trample Will while reminding him of the Battle of Garzaranso, where only one magician finished with the 10,000 foolish dwarves who rebelled and with the swing of the wand 10,000 warrior dwarves were decimated and that was the way the world worked since a sword would never surpass a wand so he should abandon his foolish dream but Will resists and replies that even so. He would become a Vander magician and the professor kicks him and asks him what his reasons were and what noble reason he said lived in his heart and will holds the glasses he got from ELFI and replies that he wanted to be with the person he loved leaving the professor surprised while will said that he wanted to fulfill the promise he made to ELFI, which Edward considers to be absurd, something impure. 
immoral and dirty and questions whether he thought that this foolish, pathetic and worldly love would lead him to reach the pinnacle of magic, and will responds that his reasons might seem ridiculous to him, and even though his path might be difficult he would see the sunset with Yella Fai leaving the professor furious. But Colette finally arrives and throws the sword to Will who thanks her and prepares for combat, and the professor says that it wasn't a wand and would defeat him but will cuts his magic leaving Edward surprised when he wonders if that would be a Moria blade, but he didn't care and increases the level of his magic making the boy admit that he was scared and would probably be burned again in a terrifying volley of a thousand flames and his arms and legs were shaking after all this was the barrier between him and the magic vanders, and even though he wants to run away he decides to face him after all this was the only way to cross the barrier, and goes after the professor who attacks him tirelessly, while Will remembers the details behind the Battle of Garzaranso where a brave dwarf general called Gareth fought bravely even after the loss of all his brothers and despite everything he struck a single blow against the wizard and in honor of his bravery, the wizards recognized the status of the dwarves and will throw some stones at Edward who tries to strike him but the boy jumps and says that this was the moment when the sword would overcome the wand and with one impulse he manages to break his barrier and stands in front of Edward who points the wand at the boy and in a state of shock Edward notices that his cheek had been cut and enraged. He withdraws and grants the five credits to Will Surfert. And Colette runs to the boy who was exhausted while the director ended the illusion and Workener says that he chose to dive into the dam and hid to attack from a blind spot above his head making the director admit that it had been a powerful blow that he was able to, to break through the shield and with this slashing attack he was able to overcome the magic and it was truly as if he was fearless. But in the meantime, close to the gym, someone was preparing a special dish with lots of love while waiting for Will, who was taking a while. The day Yella Fai presented Will with the battle goggles he promised that even without magic he would also go to the tower so they could watch the sunset together, and even if everything tried to separate them he would continue going after her without caring about that that happens leaving the girl emotional as she promises to wait for him no matter how long and on the day that Yella Fai became a magic vander will promise that this would be the last time he would act in a pathetic way. And in the present Will, a boy considered talentless and a book apprentice did his job delivering newspapers through the streets of the city, and when he dropped one of them he noticed an article where they announced that Elferia had created a new magic, and in this way she became the only mega to have created 12 unique spells leaving will determine to do his best just like Yella Fai, but in addition to this news he also had a request from the institute, and the client would be Elferia herself. And after reading the news Will runs to the dorm where he asks his colleague Rosti to make a magical item for him who questions why he is so agitated so Will tells him that Yella Fai sent a request to the gym and how today was his day off he would prioritize the request which would be to collect ice cores from the frozen walker, so she would probably need a lot of magical catalysts and as the target would be on the fourth floor he would need the magical items from Rosti who starts laughing with his extremely direct roommate and hands him a device he had improved, leaving Will excited, but before he leaves, Rosti stuffs a loaf of bread in his mouth, and upon arriving at the dungeon, Will remembers the words of the wizard Queen Mercedes, one of the great pioneers who left the following phrase in history. Everything is born from the dungeon. Children of magic take their knowledge and wisdom and follow their paths transforming the unknown into the known and conquer it since everything was connected, and when Will arrives on the fourth floor he notices that the place was very busy which he was waiting for an order from ELFI and even Shaun was helping, but the boy was still dissatisfied after all that day Will's blows were more powerful, and Will decides to go deeper into the dungeon since that way. Shaun and the others would get everything, but he ends up finding a girl in trouble, and with his speed and power Will manages to decimate the dubious penguins leaving the girl without understanding how he defeated them without using magic, but a sword and Will asks how she was, and the girl replies that everything was fine and thanks him for saving her and introduces herself as Iris. But meanwhile in his class, Professor Workner said that creating a new spell was such a great achievement that it guaranteed advancement to the tower, and the new spells were named after their creators, which would leave them engraved in history. But this was so complicated that the students thought it was an unrealistic way of advancement, and Rose asks if this meant that Elferia who was in the newspapers was talented, and the teacher replies that she was so good that it was almost unbelievable. And he would certainly be cited as one of the greatest magicians in history for being the only one to have created 12 original spells and Colette comments that this childhood friend that Will was trying to reach was really incredible and her friend Rose starts teasing her saying that she looked like a maiden who was jealous and afraid of having her will stolen by her incredible childhood friend. Leaving the girl indignant but the teacher catches their attention and Charlotte wonders if Will was also in the dungeon because of her. And we return to Iris who asks if her veteran was the apprentice from books that said he couldn't use magic an unprecedented talent, leaving Will disappointed and asks why she called him a veteran, and she explains that she was only 12 years old. 
So will the sides ask if she wasn't bothered or felt disdain since as she said he had no talent, and Iris questions how she could belittle the person who saved her, and even though he can't use magic she respected people who had their own gifts so will. Changes his mind subject quickly, and asks if she came because of the request, which the girl confirms, after all, she also wanted to be useful to the Vander's magic since she also wanted to become one of the people who supported the heavens. Making will remember that no one knew the true heaven, and even now the world was still hidden, and the tremendous magical energy of the Vander's magic covered everything creating a false sky known as the Great Barrier, and according to the story when the barrier fell the world would once again be enveloped in darkness and calamity would reign and for for this reason. The students made an effort to fulfill the Vander's magician's requests, and not only because they admired them but also because they believed that this would help protect the sky and Iris comments that she would never forget the day she met Elfaria. Catching the boy's attention while she said she was alone in the dungeon surrounded by a bunch of monsters, but when she thought it would be the end of her, Lady Elfaria saved her by creating an ice paradise and after that they managed to talk about several things and she would give her all for her but Kiki calls by Will and Iris comments that even though she tried hard, she still didn't find any frozen walkers and not even her search was able to capture it and she becomes curious about what Will was doing. So the boy explains that the frozen walkers left fragments of ice when they moved, but this fragment was almost twice the size of those normally found, so there would certainly be something powerful ahead in a place where the seeker couldn't identify it and the girl asks how he knew that even without being able to use magic and Will responds that magic was something incredible but he didn't think it was absolute, especially inside the dungeon and he believed that with intelligence, wisdom and experience he could compensate for it, and begins to prepare for combat against the huge monster that attacks them from above, but Will takes the girl in his arms while thinking that he should transform the unknown into the known and Iris is surprised by the monster that would be a frozen Arex, the highest form of the Wanderer. Frozen which was worth 6 credits, which made it the special monster on the fourth floor, which Will was already waiting for and dodges the monster's freezing ray and asks the girl to stay out while he takes care of it, but Iris warns him that he wouldn't be able to since physical attacks did not work on the creature that instantly froze anything that touched it, which gave it the reputation of eliminating dwarves, after all. The only way to deal with it would be with magic, but Will responds that everything was fine and has already faced monsters like this often. He then goes into combat with his new equipment and with his dexterity he manages to dodge all of the creature's blows and takes advantage of his blind spot to launch and plant his equipment in the monster's body and once again runs around him tying him with a special cable while thinking that this creature was weak against flames and explosive attacks and when the creature prepares a mega attack will, which shows no fear, activates its device creating a flame that runs through the entire cable until it reaches the explosives that decimate the monster upon being activated, and with the end of the battle Will thinks that he expected nothing less from Rosti's magical items and needed to thank him, but that sweet and innocent air of Iris disappears, and with a different personality she notices that there was a big difference between reality and rumors who heard about the talentless and wonders how she should report that but. Will calls her, and with a smile he says that now they had many and. They could leave, and the girl smiles again. And later in the tower Iris removes his disguise and thinks that he may not be able to use magic but the way he compensated was very creative, in addition to having a keen sense of battle due to his experience. After all he was not a wizard but a talented warrior and enters the magic Vander's room Carriot, Eleanor, Zeo and Elfaria who were in a meeting of appearances and they comment that if the barrier were broken the world would be lost as they would be overwhelmed with the numbers and forces. They had at that time against the invader celestials who observed them from the other side then needed talented newcomers for the day of destiny since they could not allow what was written in the stories to be fulfilled and they asked the observer if she found someone useful and the girl responds that she discovered an interesting being without talent who will surfer couldn't use magic and recommends him for a position in the tower but criot and eleanor are against it unlike zeo who finds him Interesting and Eleanor tells her not to increase the number of inferior people she had around her and Zio responds that they they were very rigid in their ideas and would even accept a dwarf if he was useful and with an air of hostility Eleanor says that she didn't understand what a barbarian like him was doing there and Carriot tells them both to stop. After all there was no need to rush in since the, the day of the great magic festival was near, so they could wait to make a decision with the results which everyone agreed on, since the useful ones would reach the top on their own and if they didn't make it, that would be their limit. And with the end of this meaningless meeting, the three they leave and only Elfaria remains in the room and the seeker admits that this young man she spoke of was really interesting and Elfaria agrees and holds the nucleus that Will had delivered and says that she was waiting for him. 7200 points of the 12,000 credits available at the academy were required for students to advance to the higher institute an absolute condition to become a Vander magician 
and as the students fought the sips the credits were applied to those who defeated them and Shaun he had 9,889 credits and Colette 7340, and when it came to Will's battle he ended up being defeated because of the students' nasty comments that made him give up trying to punch the golem, what? Everyone expected from him was a book nerd. And as for the other students we have the three most skilled at the academy which would be Lehanna with 10,100 credits, Wignall with 10,075 credits and finally Julius with 10,048 credits and Lehanna comments that everyone seemed to be sharp which Wignall agrees after all the moment of revelation was close and Julius declares his rivalry against the two since he was confident that he would defeat them but the two didn't pay attention to the boy despite being eager to face him being the only ones in the academy with more than 10,000 credits and meanwhile will thought that the credits served to demonstrate the strengths of the students, and he didn't have enough to graduate or go to higher education after all he only had 5,405 credits, and to make matters worse this was his last year and Julius interrupts his thoughts by saying that what was getting in the way and calls him a failure that he shouldn't appear before him, making will apologize and leave while Julius's companions said that a scout would definitely choose him at the big festival, making will remember that they were at that time. In the Colette cafeteria he said that the only option would be for Will to be recruited at the festival, since progressing only with writing and praxis was unrealistic, and as there were reports of students who went to the tower when recruited he could achieve it even with less than 7,000 credits which Will agrees with. After all at that time everyone was trying to turn the tables on this event that took place every two years at the Magic Academy where there were several competitions and the high magicians came down from the tower to recruit people and Colette says that in practice the festival would be a competition between students of different factions of the tower that would be Wand of the Lord of Lightning, Thorzius Fate, Sacred Wand of the Elf, Elif Kanan, Wand of the Emperor of Flames, Insidia Barum, Wand of the Ice Maiden, Albiz Vina in addition to the Sovereign Wand of Light, Mysteria's Noah who would be the current Magic Vander who leads the four factions seven, and if one of them chose him it would be certain that he would be accepted in the tower what will thought was impossible since it was necessary to show some type of magic that would put a high magician to shame, and Colette replied that it wasn't just that, and they said that. There were observers at the festival who caught great talents and took to the tower what will I also didn't believe it. After all, this was just another one of the seven legends of the academy, and as someone without talent like him shouldn't try to stand out at the festival, he would stay in the organization just like other times. But Colette believed that everyone would see him differently if he showed himself her skills and will thanks her, but if she participated it would look like a sporting event and reminds her of the last time she participated in the festival which was known as the worst in history and ended up being highlighted in a negative way. And after lunch Colette comments that thanks to the festival many scouts would come from abroad and they could get another career if they don't climb the tower and that's why WL also needed to participate although Will remains reluctant. But Colette feels something and goes to a closet and says that she felt a hidden barrier as if to muffle the sound and with Kiki's help she managed to break it and when she opened the closet she came across a staircase and at the end there were several. Students making clandestine bets on the winner of the magic festival the little tiger of magic, but anyway, will a surprise to see Shaun who questions what they were doing there leaving Colette angry and tells him to stop being rude to Will in a very friendly way, and they just got there by chance and Will asks why he was in that place since it didn't seem like that he was betting and his Shaun colleagues started saying that they didn't care about the size of the bets and he shouldn't have been. Thinking wow, how frustrating the big difference he had against the others or sad that none of the top three looked at him leaving Shaun indignant, and Colette takes the opportunity to provoke him after all he didn't know he was worried about the others and Shaun responds that he hadn't lost to them and just had less than 10,000 credits for having failed the written test but he becomes indignant again when he notices who was being ignored and questions why he was explaining himself to them. And with that he leaves and after class Colette asks if he could go with Will to the dungeon but the boy apologizes because that night he was working at Miss Gina's tavern leaving the upset girl. 
And in the tavern, the miners drank after their exhausting work to the sound of laughter and one of the dwarfs. Mr. Donnan comments that Will had his problems since he worked in the morning delivering newspapers and studied in the afternoon, and at night he was a waiter in the tavern, and Will replies that he couldn't a scholarship so if he didn't work he couldn't pay for school making Donnan remember that soon there would be that festival thing, and maybe if he participated things would change but. Will says he wouldn't participate and Gina tells him to stop talking since his friend was working much harder than him and Will thanks Rosty for his help who admits that working without using magic was something new, but above all that he was helping his roommate and Gina asks Will to get another roommate to help, making the dwarves laugh, after all, he already he worked for two and they were sure that W.A.L. could do it, after all he was like a brother to everyone, and after things calmed down. Rosty asked if everything was okay with him since the dwarf's salary wasn't very good and surely Professor Workner could present a work better for him, but Will responds that it was already giving him a lot of work, and besides that he liked Mr. Donnan and the others who were warm people and loved to drink besides being great with their hands, and despite him being like that they welcomed him from warm way and therefore respected the dwarves. But the atmosphere in the tavern becomes tense with the arrival of Julius who questions what kind of vulgar place this was and starts laughing when he sees that the loser worked there, but it was no surprise after all he belonged with the barbarians, and Donnan tries to question what he had said, but a dwarf stops him and Julius questions what that face was, after all. They were nothing more than an inferior race that immigrated from another world, and could only live in this world due to the kindness of everyone, so they should put themselves in their rightful place. Making will remember that a long time ago when the world of the dwarves was destroyed by celestial invaders they fled to this world and unlike the elves the dwarves were treated with disdain and if a dwarf laid hands on a wizard they would be in danger since in this world magic was absolute and discrimination against the dwarves showed a little of this city and Julius and his colleagues start to make fun of the dwarves beans after all. Even in the countryside they had something more decent besides finding the place so stinking of sweat that even the beasts were better than these filthy brutes that they should leave the country and Furious will goes to them, and says that he wanted them to take back the insults they made to everyone since they were mistaken. After all the dwarves beans grew in infertile soil, which demonstrated their knowledge, and the dwarves sweat was proof of their effort under. Severe conditions which were things that could not be taken lightly and Julius questions if they developed a bond since neither of them used magic, and questions what was the problem with saying that what stinks, stinks and kicks the dinner plate beans in the boy, and his colleagues tell the loser not to think about himself and should get out of there soon but will buries their faces in the ground making them pass out and spills the drink on Julius while saying that the savagery between him and them was much more insensitive than the dwarves and they were worse than beasts, leaving Julius furious when he said that he hadn't experienced such humiliation in a long time and begins to freeze the place while questioning if he understood who he decided to fight with and attacks W.G.L. with several freezing spells that the boy manages to dodge and break despite one of them taking off his glasses, but Julius launches a new spell that expands the ice until it traps the boy on the wall, and when he goes to will he summons an ice rose on the boy's chest and Donnan says that this was going too far while Rosty held back, so as not to interfere but Will's look remained. Confident making Julius tremble and change his mind since trapping him in the ice in this place wouldn't be enough to satisfy him and that's why he sends the loser to enter the big festival so that he can be humiliated in front of everyone and after breaking his ice will holds the varia and agrees to participate. Making Rosty think that this was a problem since Will was really furious and Julius says he would take any opportunity he had to stay at the academy and Will responds that if he wins. Julius should apologize to Mr. Donnan and the others. The festival is officially opened with a quote from the great founder, Mercedes. Improve, compete, and strive. Once you have reached your best, support the sky and never serve as a foundation for evil. The students watch as Lihama wins the sky race, which is no surprise. The principal notices that scouts in the audience are observing the students with excitement and acknowledges that the tower was indeed swift, something the observer Iris agrees with. After all, 
The mages from outside could only come during the festival to select the best students. Iris bids farewell to the principal, mentioning that she had work to do, and while holding a sword necklace, she says she would be rooting for a certain veteran. We then move to Shaun, who is excited as he recalls Colette asking him to join her team. Surely, she finally recognized his worth, as he would be the obvious choice between him and the failure. However, upon entering the backstage, he is outraged to see W.L. with Colette, who reminds him that she had asked him to join her team for the race to the crown. To participate, the team needed at least 21,000 combined credits, so he was the only option for W.L. to be able to join, leaving Shaun indignant as he questions why he has to help the talentless one. Besides, he doesn't understand why W.I.L. would want to participate in a higher-level event. But the arrival of Julius creates a tense atmosphere, and Shaun becomes even more irritated when he notices that W.I.L. isn't looking at him. Colette explains that something happened between the two of them, and when Julius entered the race, W.I.L. said he would do the same at any cost, leaving Shaun furious for being ignored after being humiliated that way. As the festival begins, the announcer Mike, along with the commentator Professor Edward, announces that the next competition is the crown race. The members of the Elven group initiate a large-scale spell to conjure a diverse playing field with the following zones, volcanic, swampy, rocky, grassy, and finally, the forest zone. Unlike other events, this would be a team competition with groups of three, and the teams would start at the outer edge and move toward the central stadium, where the first group to grab the crown would win. But of course, they would not only face the forces of nature on their path, as the professors had prepared various traps, and it was also allowed for teams to hinder each other, making this the most brutal and intense festival of all the years. Edward mentions that this event was a practical demonstration of how the group would handle dungeons, and Mike states that the favorite teams would be Wignalls and Julius, while the least popular team, for completely different reasons, would be Team 6. Alongside Sion, a candidate for victory, was the talentless one, causing everyone to mock W.E.L. The teams take their positions, and Workener is surprised to see W.E.L., reminding him that he had warned him several times not to get involved in the festival. But he notices that W.I.L. was different, and the boy apologizes to the professor, but even if it makes him a laughingstock, this was a battle he needed to win. With that, Mike starts the race, and the first obstacle would be several golems. Will's team advances, making some students question what the talentless one would do, as he couldn't even scratch a golem in class. Colette casts her magic, creating a stone gauntlet that W.A.L. uses to destroy several golems non-stop, creating a large explosion that leaves the students in shock, unable to believe what the talentless one was doing. Colette explains that even though he can't use magic, he could attack with a magical gauntlet, which wasn't against the rules. Thanks to this, it is announced that the bookworm student is the first to cross the golem mountain. As for Shaun, he thought that he would have preferred to lose his life rather than be saved by that guy that day, and that's why he fought desperately to become stronger, but it still seemed like W.A.L. was ahead. Mike announces that Will's group has taken the lead. In the rocky zone, W.A.L. punches the ground, blocking the earth trap, and Colette summons several stone swords that W.A.L. uses to break the cubes that were launching rocks in a series of explosions, making the students question whether the failure was actually strong, which seemed impossible, and it must be Colette's magic that was incredible. Rosti says that's not wrong, but there was something else that left the evaluators impressed, recognizing that W.A.L. was very fast, as was his detection of traps and how he countered them. It was really incredible. Edward mentions that these moves were from someone who spent all their time in the dungeon, and his knowledge and experience freed him from any inefficiency, while his reflexes gave him the opportunity to advance, leaving Iris very excited as she cheered for the veteran W. Gale, who was advancing frantically without falling into any traps while the other team struggled to overcome the brutal obstacles. 
Mike wonders if the talentless one could really be the first to reach the stadium. As for Julius, he walked calmly, freezing everything in his path, and asks his teammates about the situation. They respond that the talentless one's team seemed to be in the lead, which Julius didn't consider a problem. Team 6 finally reaches the last area, the enchanted forest, filled with magical circles, but WEL uses his speed to rip the circles out of the ground, causing them to cancel each other out, leaving Edward outraged, as this trap had been created by him. Will thinks that now would probably be the time when they would encounter the other teams, as they were close to the stadium, and the real fight would begin in this forest. So they needed to run and prepare an ambush to secure an advantageous position to wait for Julius. But he is nearly hit by an ice stone and is surprised to see Julius in front of him, making WEL wonder if he was alone or if his teammates were hiding. But Julius launches a series of attacks against WEL, who frantically dodges while thinking that he needs to reformulate his plan to confront him. However, the ice begins to melt, and in a state of fury, Shaun initiates a powerful spell, and Colette tells WEL to run, but since there wasn't enough time, she summons a stone barrier that blocks Shaun's magic, creating a gigantic explosion that leaves everyone wondering where the shockwave was coming from. With the forest in flames, WIL wonders what was happening, and Shaun tells Julius to leave, as he was getting in the way. Colette notices that Shaun wasn't only aiming at Julius and questions what he was thinking. Shaun tells her to be quiet, as he had let them use him up to now, so he wanted what was due to him the fight against the failure. Will questions what he was talking about, saying that this wasn't the right time, but Shaun continues to attack him, saying that he was an offense to his ears and eyes, and he didn't need a reason to crush him. Colette orders him to stop, but Julius raises an ice barrier, preventing her from interfering, and begins attacking the girl, who wonders how he escaped from that. Will tries to block Shaun's attacks, who manages to knock the sword out of his hands. Will pleads with Shaun to stop, warning that it wasn't the right time for them to fight, but consumed by hatred, Shaun orders the failure to pick up the sword, leaving WIL no choice but to wield his sword against Shaun. Shaun thought that WIL had always been so pathetic that it was painful to watch, so he considered making it less painful by proposing that WIL become his subordinate. However, WIL ignored him and asked him to step aside. Despite everything, WIL never saw them as truly bad, and it was on that day that Shaun began to despise him. In the forest, Shaun struck WIL with various spells, but the boy insisted that they were on the same team and and shouldn't be fighting. More than that, he needed to keep the promise he made to Mr. Donnan and the others, so he couldn't do it now, which made Shaun furious. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're aiming for 2,000 subscribers, so don't miss the new episodes. Just like, comment, and share a lot. It really motivates me to keep bringing anime firsthand. But enough stalling, let's get into the anime. In the arena, no one could believe that Team 6 was fighting among themselves. With a malicious smile, Edward said that, Regardless of the reason, this fight between team members was unacceptable and that he suspected the tower's watchers would look upon it unfavorably. Various comments started swirling about Shaun, who advanced with extraordinary brilliance, but in the end, he was just a schoolboy, despite finishing in fourth place with his academic credits. Rosty wondered what would happen, and Iris asked if she could sit beside him, saying it had been a long time. After sitting, she started cheering for W. Gale, making Rosty admit that he never thought she'd cheer for anyone in particular as he assumed she followed others' opinions. Iris replied that she initially learned about WEL through a certain person and wasn't interested at first, but now she was completely obsessed with him. Rosty noticed that WEL was becoming quite popular, and Iris asked if he wasn't also obsessed, which Rosty agreed with, as he loved him more than anything. Besides that, there was also Miss Colette. She was dodging Julius's attacks while thinking that she needed to stop the two of them. Julius began provoking her, saying that if she kept running away, no one would consider her worthy of the title Princess of the Earth, which made Colette furious, as she didn't want to be called that. When she defended herself, Julius triggered a trap with his magic, causing an explosion. Meanwhile, in the arena, people wondered why there were so many Juliuses in different locations. One of the Juliuses told Wignall that he had said he would use his secret weapon to crush everyone, but 
but Wignall wasn't intimidated and responded that he first wanted to return the flower gift and summoned his wind magic, creating an ice flower. With a gust of wind, he destroyed Julius, leaving his teammates curious about why he had come to them. Wignall admitted that Julius did a great job and he hadn't expected him to have that trick up his sleeve. He acknowledged that the crystal Julius had dropped was Vander's magic, driving the announcer crazy for his investment had ended Julius. An elf asked what Philvis, the field assistant of the elven group, thought of her fellow elf, and she replied that he was neither exceptional nor below expectations. Although it seemed harsh, Lafia wondered how they should report this to Miss Eleanor, while the students in the audience pondered who would emerge victorious, Julius or Wignall. They speculated that Team 6 might have had a chance if Shaun hadn't done that, and questioned what had gotten into him, and why he was so angry. One of his friends responded that he understood how Shaun felt, but trying to get him expelled because he didn't get what he wanted had gone too far. In the burning forest, W.I.L. wondered why Shaun was so focused on him and remembered everyone mocking him. He admitted that he knew he was a failure and wasn't going to ask Shaun to accept him because that was a selfish desire, so he should just leave him alone. When he asked Shaun to step aside, W.I.L. was simply thinking that he didn't have time and couldn't afford to lose sight of his goal to reach Elfine. But on that day, Shaun attacked him, just as he was doing now. Shaun summoned a fire falcon, impressing W.I.L. with his ability to summon a guardian that began attacking him. Will cut off the falcon's wing, but it quickly regenerated, making him realize that the only way to stop it was to destroy its core. However, he was attacked by Shaun and the falcon simultaneously. As he tried to fend off the attack, he thought the guardians were mainly used for defense and to buy time for an enchantment, but this one was attacking from all directions, leaving everyone in the arena in shock. Edward admitted that Shaun's proficiency was extraordinary and had already surpassed the student level. The evaluators were impressed that he had used a high-level fire spell, especially by summoning a guardian. According to the observer's reports, Shaun had potential but lagged behind the top three. Raj realized that there must have been some impulse that made him stand out and admitted that the magic festival was indeed useful and they should inform Lord Carriot that the crop was unexpectedly good. But back to the duel, where Shaun questioned if that was all W.A.L. had, as when he defeated that evil sentinel, he was better. Will questioned why they were doing this, and Shaun asked if he was serious. After being so ridiculed and suffering so many humiliations, W.A.L. was saying he had no resentment towards him, which made W.A.L. admit that he didn't like him and was furious, having lost count of how many times he imagined revenge. But now, he needed to defeat Julius, making Shaun furious, saying that just the sight of him irritated him so much that he couldn't stand it. He was angry at seeing W.I.L. refuse to give up, even though he was just a talentless nobody, and questioned why he always looked everywhere but at him. Shaun told him not to ignore him and to look at him because he didn't care about his situation, but if he said something like that again, he would crush him. Will realized how Shaun really saw him and admitted that, deep down, that was what he wanted. If Shaun was saying he would acknowledge him, then he would have to face his challenge with everything he had. This excited Shaun, as W.I.L. was finally looking at him. With that, he began to cast a powerful spell, while W.I.L. noticed that the Guardian would protect him from any careless attempt. So, he needed to observe the moment of the magical attack and try to counter it. Then, Shaun cast his large-scale destruction magic and attacked with the falcon in a simultaneous strike. Will advanced without worry, as he had already predicted the trajectory. He appeared before the fire, making Shaun realize that W.I.L. had given up defending against his magic. With one strike, W.I.L. destroyed the Guardian's core and advanced towards Shaun, who prepared a new spell. Just as they were about to collide, Colette interrupted them with a stone barrier and told them to stop. This made W.I.L. curious about Julius, and Colette replied that when she hit him, he suddenly disappeared. Shaun felt embarrassed seeing the girls in decent clothes, which made Colette outraged, as it was their fight's fault. She told W.A.L. to go ahead since she had unfinished business with Julius, and when Shaun tried to complain, she scolded him, saying that this was Will's chance to succeed. Will placed his cloak over Colette, making the girl embarrassed as he thanked her, also promising that next time he and Shaun would fight for real. Meanwhile, the arrival of the first group in the arena was announced, the group of Julius, with no one to stop them. But W.A.L. surprised everyone with his meteor-like arrival in the arena, angrily declaring that he had come to challenge Julius, which excited Julius. And so, we conclude another episode. Thank you to everyone who stayed until the end, and don't forget to help us out with your likes, subscriptions, and shares. Thank you, and see you next time.